Hey guys, Garrett97 again. This time with a review of the Armor Ghost Project Mobile Suit Girl Unicorn Gundam. Let's start by having a quick look at the box, because it's actually quite different this time. We have a large window instead of small hexagons, and when we look at the back, we will see that one of the big selling points here is that it has hard points. Um, it is compatible with the Robot Damashi Unicorn Gundam, so all the accessories you will see actually are compatible with that thing. And then another big thing is the mode change. Yes, we can change her from Unicorn Mode to Destroy Mode and the other way around too. Then here we have Destroy Mode, Original Weapons, and here we just have a nice illustration. There we go, and with the one big difference you might not have noticed is that we only see her as a mobile suit girl here and not in girl mode. And that is because the big difference for the model, for the figurine, is that, well, you can't change her into a normal girl. And at first that might sound a bit disappointing and well, they're cheaping out on us, but first of all, you know you're not gonna put her in that mode anyways, and two, it's actually a very good thing. And that might sound a bit bizarre at first, but the arms here, well, the arm guards, they're actually their own complete individual piece. And unlike the other Armor Girls projects where it was just a piece that went over the arm, this thing is a lot more solid. On, the, on all the other Armor Girls project, well, on all the previous Gundam Girls, this would just flop around all over the place and it would just be a major pain to pose or to put an accessory on it. Especially once you put on like a shield, it falls down and you gotta, well, you gotta wrestle with it to get it good. The second big thing, the hands. They're now so much easier to put on because really when you look at this, where are you supposed to hold it other than here on the arm itself? But of course, if this is a separate piece, you would just push the arm off. But now, it's just there. So, it was such a good decision to do that. Same for the legs, by the way. They're their own individual piece. They don't... Um, well, they were always their own individual piece. But this time, we do not get the normal legs either. So, it might be a bit of a shame that they... Well, they could have at least given us the normal parts as an option. But, hey, it's definitely an improvement and I would much prefer this over, all, uh, over the arm guard that went over it. Now, on to articulation. The head goes up, it's on a hinge at the top and then a hinge at the bottom as well. It goes down, backwards and forwards a bit, rotates around all the way and also goes side to side because it's not on a ball joint, but it can pretty much mimic the movement of a ball joint. So, very good there. The arms, first of all, the arm guards are on a ball. They are on a ball joint and they will disconnect. And there you can see the ball joint, which is then hinged to the backpack. So, the arm guards do give it some freedom of movement. If you really want to do a crazy pose, you just move the arm guards to the side, you do your pose, and then you kind of try to position the arm guard um, in a pose that looked kind of natural. So, go up, will rotate, and they are on a double joint. So as you can see, there's a ball joint inside there, and then there's another ball joint at the shoulder. So, they do have a very nice movement range. Go up about that far, rotate around like that. Not a lot, but that's still sufficient. The big disappointment in articulation is the elbow, which yeah, 60, 70 degrees, not that great, but that's something we can kind of live. It would have been much better if that was a double joint. It wouldn't have been that difficult to do. The hands are, as usual, they are on a hinge, so they go up and down, and you can, of course, rotate them around along with that hinge for some additional movement. And they are pretty small, so a ball joint probably wouldn't have been a good idea anyways. Then the waist goes a bit forward and really far backwards, really nice. Then the skirt armor, you got to be careful with this because it really, really likes to come off all the time, but it's very well articulated. Like that, that's the best way 
to get a lot of articulation out of it. And then you once again kind of position it around. So that's really how you're gonna get the most articulation out of it, kind of playing around taking artistic freedom. So the legs are gonna go up about that far. The back skirts also move backwards really far. That's really nice. So go back about that far. So that's really, really nice. And it's really cool thing that the back skirts are articulated. Then um, once again, they're coming loose. I'll put that back in there. And well, they are also on ball joints, but if you really want to go for some more articulation, you just move them out of the way. Side skirts go up by that far, and then the legs go out really far once again. Then the knees, and I really feel like just throwing off those side skirts, because Really, that's the only real annoyance with this kit. Just keeps coming out when you're trying to pose it. The knees, really nice bend, almost all the way. Couldn't have been any better. Then the legs also rotate around about that far. And the feet, well, they don't really have a lot of movement. Go backwards, forwards, and a bit side to side. There we go. And we'll rotate around a little bit so that's all for articulation and that's it's not the greatest but it's definitely nice the elbows could have been better but other than that it's pretty nifty on to accessories and even though we can't display her as a normal girl we do as usual get a nice variety of different faces so first of all we here have the unicorn mode head and then we get to extra expression so we have a normal smiling one which is on their standard then we get one that looks slightly annoyed and then a more aggressive looking one and the way you change them is actually a bit more involved than the other ones you remove the sides you remove the top and then you move this out and oh, that's such a cute endearing face for the unicorn mode and I have to say the faces are fantastic you know it is really like the face you would expect to see for the unicorn mode now it's kind of unfortunate that the unicorn uh, mode has such a lot of hair in front it's really a really nice face but of course you can't put this on the destroy mode or use that front now let's put this to the side and now start with the accessories that you would expect from the unicorn gundam the tra the archetypical weapon the traditional beam rifle and you can do a lot with this first of all we have this clip here which oops allows it to attach it to the backpack first and foremost that's what you would expect and then we of course get a lot of different hands we get two of those trigger finger hands simply slide it in there and it sits in there really securely once you slide it in there we go and that is one hell of a grip you also have movable side one here let's clip that back in and that's not even half of what you can do with it let's quickly remove this again another well kind of mundane thing we have a clip here Attaches to all the sides of the legs, attaches to the side skirts, attaches to the back skirt. However, of course, this isn't going to be as handy unless you put her on an action base. Turn around, well, this is feasible, but when you put her on when you put it on the side skirt, that's also gonna get in the way. The best way to put it somewhere is on the arms and kind of have it, you know, like that. But when we remove this and when we bring in another accessory the giant beam javelin the cool thing is you can actually remove this from the beam javelin rotate this around and put this on there and isn't that a very awesome bayonet? That is really, really nice. Now it's really unfortunate that we only get one of these in here. It would be so awesome to have one on the beam rifle and then one on the beam javelin. 
So that is really awesome. But with the Beam Javelin, it's of course gonna be a bit more front heavy. So what you can do is you get this extra part here, which slides onto the beam rifle at the end. And then you simply, you have this open up, slide it in the hand, and then that there is another peg, peg that attaches to the arm. Slide it back, slide it back, slide it back. Go, yeah, gotta line it up, and there. And that is one of the most secure beam rifles around. But that's still not everything that you can do with the beam rifle because we also get these two parts and those. Once again, I'm gonna remove it. Off it comes. And those attach to the pegs that are on there. So this one goes on there and then you can put the other one up there. And now this might seem a bit weird, like why would you wanna do that, but we get yet another very nice accessory for that. And it goes. Say you don't want to use this in the hand. Well, this might look very familiar from the Dendrobium Girl. And well, pretty much the exact same thing. It clicks onto the back here. So it simply goes in there. And then you have all of those, yeah, tentacles. And you can attach them to the sides here. You can attach it to the gap in there. So really, these parts allow you to do a lot of different poses with the beam rifle. So if you don't want to use it in the hand, this is sure to find a use for that. I mean, you can put, like I said, the tentacle goes in there, you can put them on there, and these allow for so many different poses. I mean, they're so, so well articulated. I mean, when you look at them, they're on a double hinge. There, go back. This here rotates around. It's on a ball, so it will wiggle around. And there's one slit, so it does come down. And it's the same for all four of them. And then it will also go up and down a bit. And that's about it. Oh yeah, and of course, these will also rotate around. So this is a very nice accessory for parts you don't want to use and for extra stability, as you will soon see with the beam javelin. But then, let's quickly put this aside because introducing another staple accessory for the Unicorn Gundam is this shield here. And this really shows you that this figure was made to work with the robot Damashi because we don't just get one clip for the shield, we get two clips for the shield. One for the robot Damashi and one for the Unicorn Gundam Girl here. So we're gonna use the one for the Gundam Girl. We have, as always, two different ones. One for the side, one for the back. Simply click it in. And one question for quality control here. That's how we came out of the box. Not too impressed with that. Please slide that up and in it goes. There we go. And then if you've seen the box, you know that's definitely not all you can do with that shield because we get more. We have the extra armor to go on there. Let's quickly detach that. And then with all the extra boost that's gonna give you, of course, gonna want to attach it to the back. And this here attaches on there. And then this goes on there. And then we get another part to cover this up. There we go. And one fun thing you can do is this hatch here goes down and then it's actually made so that she can kind of drag it along with her. But that's really something you're gonna wanna do with the more clumsy unicorn mode. So for now, let's put this on the badass destroy mode. Put down this hinge and then we attach it to her back. There we go. And that definitely looks really badass. 
And of course, that shield can also do a lot more, but that's for when we get to the unicorn mode. Now, another big accessory I've already shown is this beam javelin, but first let's quickly get this, oh, get the pike back, because we want to see that thing in its full glory. And like I said, we really should have gotten two of these. One to put on the beam javelin and one to put on the beam rifle. So attach that again. And the thing is, this is of course a quite big monstrosity, a very heavy thing as well. But once again, they thought of that. So the first thing, you just gotta slide it in there. And the manual will also explicitly tell you that this is compatible with the robot Damashi. So you simply slide it in there. And right now it's kind of floppy, but it's actually surprisingly well. It's not that bad. For such a big giant weapon, it's not floppy at all. But just for that extra stability, you're going to use this. So for ease, I'm just quickly going to pop this off. You gotta slide it in the hole in the backpack and that's of course gonna come off and then what you want to do is grab hold of one of the tentacles and there's a hole right over there and then you just have to line it up and kind of fiddle with it until you have it in a good position so you simply click it in there a perfect fit and then this is gonna be very secure and really with enough moving it around it's going to be in exactly the pose you want it to be then you can have it either like this yeah. so you can really have it in every pose you want if you just put enough time and effort into it and that is really nice i really like how they think about stability here just you know the most annoying thing would be is you have a an awesome accessory and the girl simply can't hold it up. And while we're talking about the tentacles, this shield here, and what you do to put it on there is you grab one of these two connectors that we previously used on the beam rifle. You have that peg there, simply slide it on that peg. And then you simply connect this to one of those. And there you go, you have the shield attached to those things. And hey, if you buy another one, or if you buy the add-on pack, you can kind of have yourself an improvised phoenix. So, like I said, a lot of interesting combination that you can do with this. But still not everything, because now we're going to take the shield, and you can store the beam javelin on there. Because if you once again take this part here, and I really love how all of these things are compatible with each other. You click this on there, and then you grab the beam javelin. And then you're just gonna make sure that this comes out. Out you come. Then you just remove the handle and you attach it on there where the handle just went in and now you have it stored on there and you can of course still attach it to the arm with a very nice side view I mean it really looks like those beams are coming out of shield so this really adds some extra flair to that shield and this is really nice looking and of course to make that combination look even better what you can do is I don't think we've mentioned the beam savers yet. You have the beams that come out. You attach. Well, first we'll get rid of those tentacles and this is also getting a bit messy. And then you just hook it up there. In it goes. Come on. Yes. Get on there, there we go. And there goes one of the other beam savers. And then you grab one of these 
two very nice clear beam savers. Unfortunately, we only get two of them, but we do have four beam saver handles. And you simply attach this on the beam tonfa. And that is a very, very nice side view there. And even with all of that stuff going on, it doesn't seem too difficult to balance her. And that is important for one very big, very unfortunate reason. She doesn't come with a stand. Unlike all of the other Armor Girls projects. That is the biggest disappointment of this kit. I mean, all of these accessories we've just looked at now, still more to come, and we're not getting a stand. Very unfortunate, but like I said, she does seem to be very, very firm on her feet. Now, for a few remaining smaller accessories, a quick look at her hands. Some extra hands for getting two closed holding hands. Come to think of it, we haven't checked out the beam servers that are on there. And they just slide in there and they are in there very, very securely. They're not going anywhere. And oh yeah, all four beam savers are the same. The ones on the tonfas as well. So you can just put these on the tonfas and you can remove the ones on the tonfas. Let's put these to the side. We're also getting two open palm hands. Two closed fist hands, one is already on there, and two trigger finger hands. And before we move on to our transformation to the unicorn mode, I just noticed that I forgot about this little piece here that goes on the end of the beam javelin. Just slide it on there, and now the beam javelin is complete in all of its glory. Now let's immediately kick off with the transformation. So we simply drag this off and of course this is very simple close up all the stuff and then the way the destroy mode well the destroy mode shield is transformed is first you simply take this off and then you remove this up click it in there and there we go and then you just close it up exactly as you'd expect to put that on again and there we go then i'll remove this and now come on off you come off so as you can see it's on there very securely which is of course a good thing since it's supposed to support a lot of weight and then with the body it's actually very simple Starting off with those shoulders. There we go. Simply remove them and out you come. As you can see, it's all on there very securely. Now, if only this would want to come up. There we go. The shoulders have been transformed. Then, transforming the waist. Transformed. And Yes, I wish I was kidding. This is actually, honestly, how the transformation works. Chest transformed. And this is really one of the biggest anti-climaxes ever. The way you transform this thing. Now let's have a look at the arms. Simply remove that. And slide this out. Come on, off you come. There we go. Transformed! And now, this time I was getting, we do get these parts to put on there. So, simply put that on. Transformed. The other arm as well. And let's turn that around there we go transformed and sometimes people like to complain about parts formers the backpack transformed the legs i can't help but shake the feeling that this feels more like ripping it apart rather than transforming it i think somebody forgot 
what to transform actually means. There we go, the legs have been transformed. And then the feet simply slide them down. Well, this actually does transform. Kudos to the feet. The feet actually transform. Props to the feet. Brilliantly done. Absolutely brilliant. Then the head, decapitation, and slide on another head. So, this is definitely the biggest anti-climax ever. It's not really a transformation now, is it? It's more like ripping parts off until we get the very cute unicorn mode. But, still a very nice figure in its own right. And, you know, this is really a more clumsy feeling character. We, this head really has this cute Moe vibe. They usually go for the clumsy thing. And hell, it's even supposed to drag the shield along instead of really putting it on. That's just how it is. So, well, once again, you're definitely going to be able to pull off some really nice poses with this figure. And the real final accessory we're getting is this adapter part for the Wing Gundam Zero Endless Waltz backpack. So in case you want to give our unicorn girl here some wings and turn her into a horned pegasus, you can do that with this piece. Though if you do not have the Wing uh, Gundam Zero girl, then this is kind of pointless, but it's nice that they give it to us. Let's put this aside and the real final thing I'm gonna say about this before wrapping up is once again about the stand because even though we do not get one, she is compatible with the Stage Act 5 from Tamashi and it will plug into either the bottom of the backpack where the tentacle pack would fit in or in the hole here on the tentacle backpack itself. So those are the two points where those stage fives will, uh, where those act fives will connect to. So it's either that or picking up the uh, 4,000 yen option pack, though it's probably gonna be a lot more since it's an online exclusive. And you know, she could really use a stand. So one way or the other, I would definitely recommend picking up uh, one of those two options. And while I'm holding this, there's so much to do with this pack. I mean, they flam, they fold up, they fold in, and I don't think I've explicitly mentioned this, but you can remove these things, and if you have the dendrobium girl, you can actually have up to three tentacles on each side. So, a whopping six tentacles. So, if you combine this with the dendrobium girl, you're gonna have a lot of stuff going on. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And well, yes and no. But for 5,800 yen, she doesn't seem that much more expensive than the other Gundam girls out there. But when you take into account that she does not come with a stand, the legs are excluded, well, normal, normal legs are excluded, normal arms are excluded, you can see that in reality, she's gonna be more expensive than the other ones because even that um, Tamashi stand she's compatible with retails for like 900 to 1,000 yen. So when you take that into account, she suddenly becomes a lot more expensive. However, that does not take away from all of the awesomeness she can deliver. However, the final thing about the stand that I'm gonna say in this review is she really could use a stand, she really needs one. For example, when I was trying to pose her like this, I wanted to have the shield on the octopus pack and have it in front of her, like defending her in a cool action pose. But then uh, she would be too front heavy and she would fall forward because, you know, feet are relatively small, even though they do balance her pretty well when you work around it, you definitely want to stand for all of those crazy poses you can do with this figure. And that's really the thing, she would shine if she came with a stand. But, like I said, she can transform, um, if you call it that. She comes with a shitload of accessories. They can even be used by the robot Dimash, so that gives you some extra play value if you also have the Unicorn. And if you have some of the other Armor Girls project figures or uh, the other Gundam Girls, then you can do even more stuff. So you know, you have these things and all of those other weapons from the other Gundam Girls are also going to be compatible with this. And 
If you have them all, you can really make some very interesting combinations. It's like Legos, but with Gundam Girls and with those weapons, I'm sure if you're creative enough, you can do some really, really fun stuff. So at the end of the day, if you're willing to dish out some extra money for a stand, or if you are crazy enough to buy the add-on pack, which I'm currently kind of considering, because she definitely has this slight incomplete feeling, but if you're willing to do any one of those two things, then this is definitely a great figure if you're a fan of Gundam Girls or just uh, Mecha Muzume in general. Finally, for some comparisons, here is next to some other Gundam Girls, the Wing Gundam Zero. And as you can see, a stand definitely enhances the appearance. And when we move her up, they are of course about the same size. Then let's put her next to the Dendrobium Girl. Move his arm down and bring in another very well armed Gundam girl. Now just make sure nothing falls off. As you can see, don't these two look nice together? And here she's next to a Karante, a Boizashinki figurine, and as you can see, she's slightly smaller than a Karante with her very long lower legs. And really, we should get a stand. But what's this? Looks like time has run out. And for the final comparison, here she's next to another Budashinki figurine, Strarf in girl mode, and a Figma Hatsune Miku. And as you can see, she's about the same size as the Figma, but the Budashinki figurine is slightly taller. And then before I end this review, I'll quickly transform myself into Unicorn Mode 2. Because if this figure has taught me one thing, it is that you can transform to unicorn mode by removing accessories. There we go, I am a unicorn now. Stop laughing, it's not like it's any less ridiculous than a transformation this figurine did. Well, that's all for this review, and see you guys next time.